Getting your book in a bookstore is one of the most common dreams we hear from first-time authors. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about getting your book into brick-and-mortar bookstores while avoiding all the risks that can come with it. Hey everybody, my name is Charlie Hone. I'm an author myself and the head of multimedia for Scribe. We started Scribe Book School to help everyone write, publish, and market their books. So if you need help with your book, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Before we get into the good stuff, let us address the fact that the publishing industry changed massively since eBooks made self-publishing accessible to everyone. And being in a bookstore, doesn't actually guarantee book sales. It's not the best way to make money with your book. In fact, even if you can get your book onto thousands of shelves across the country, and most authors can't, you're taking a huge financial risk. It's the kind that can actually bankrupt a self-published author. And there's absolutely zero reason to expose yourself to that kind of risk. And again, in today's world, you can publish a tremendously successful book and use it to make a lot of money without ever being on any bookstore shelves. It's been done thousands of times by countless other authors who are just like you. So that's really where we need to start, is by asking, do you really want your book to be in bookstores? And before you get started down that path, you need to know that getting your book onto bookstore shelves takes a ton of work. And that's fine. Most things that are worthwhile, they take a lot of work, like writing a book. But before you go through everything it takes to get your book into stores, you need to make sure it's what you really want to do. There is a huge difference between trying to get a few copies of your book into your local bookstore and trying to get thousands of copies of that same book in bookstore chains across the country. That second option, being in bookstore chains like Barnes & Noble, it's really hard to do. But more importantly, it exposes you to a ton of risk. And believe it or not, there is not a huge difference in the number of books you're likely to sell from getting your book into all those stores, at least not for most authors. In other words, there is a huge risk with almost no upside. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because usually the greater the risk, the greater the reward. But the way the publishing industry works and the way people buy books today make brick and mortar stores a bad bet for most self-publishing authors. You're a lot better off making money with your book in other ways. And to understand why, you need to know a few critical things about how bookstores really work. So let's talk about how brick and mortar bookstores actually work and why they're so risky. Number one, wholesale versus retail pricing. When a bookstore sells your book, you split the money from that sale with the bookstore. That's how bookstores make their money. So let's say your print book retails for $14.99. That's the price listed on your cover. If the bookstore gets a 30% wholesale discount, that means they're paying 30% less than the retail price. That means $10.49. You also have to pay for printing and shipping out of your $10.49. That's about $3 to print a 150 page book and $2.25 for shipping. So you'll get to keep around $5.24. And since the bookstore is only making $4.50 per book, they have to sell a lot of copies just to cover their expenses like salaries, rent, electricity, etc. That's why bookstores are struggling to stay open. It's a factor that affects your own risk as you'll see in a minute. Number two, how and when books get printed. You have to print a lot of copies of your book if you wanna be in a lot of stores. And that might seem obvious, but it's a huge downside for most self-published authors. Self-published books are usually sold as print on demand, which means that copies of your book aren't printed until someone actually buys them. Bookstores won't buy your book in the first place unless they have the right to return it if it doesn't sell. That brings us to number three, what returnable really means. Making your book returnable is the only way that bookstores will order it for their shelves. And it gets worse. If a bookstore returns your books, you only have two choices. You can one, pay for shipping and delivery of the books, or two, you can tell the bookstore to destroy the books and give them their money back anyway. Now just imagine, what would happen if bookstores across the country all returned your book at the same time? like say because of a pandemic, you would owe for potentially thousands of books. 
And if you wanted those books back, you'd also have to pay for shipping on thousands of books and then find a way to store them. Now you can see why I said this could bankrupt a self-published author. In fact, we personally know authors who were trying to get their books into bookstores and failed, and they should be extremely grateful that that happened because their books were only in a handful of stores when the pandemic hit. So they only lost like 50 bucks when those stores shut down and returned all their inventory. But remember, bookstores were already struggling before the pandemic, and today they have less foot traffic than ever. If even a small chain goes under, it can cost you thousands of dollars. The risk of mass returns is by far the biggest risk of being in brick and mortar bookstores, but there are other aspects of bookstore sales that you need to be aware of too. That brings us to number four, distributing your book through Ingram. Most self-published authors publish their books through Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing, the KDP system, which was formerly CreateSpace. Now, KDP claims it can distribute your book to physical bookstores if you choose that option, and it's true to a degree, but very few bookstores will order your print book through KDP for its physical shelves because the KDP system won't let them make your books returnable. Now, why is that? Well, maybe it's because Amazon doesn't want to end up in the exact situation I just described. It doesn't want to eat all those returns and it doesn't want to tell its KDP authors that they have to eat those returns either. Amazon isn't going to put itself in that situation because it's a bad deal. So if you want your book to be in physical stores, you'll have to distribute your print book through Ingram Spark. And the Ingram Spark dashboard is significantly more complicated than Amazon's KDP. Number five, the reality of wholesale discounts. So here's the good news. If you want your print book to be in online stores like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or Walmart, you can set the Ingram discount as low as 30%. And Ingram keeps 15% for shipping and bookstores get 15% when they sell your book and you still pay for printing. Now for a book that retails at $14.99, you'd get to keep about $7.49 per book. But that doesn't work if you want your print book to take up shelf space in physical stores. Now for that, you need to give retailers a 40% discount, which means you have to set your Ingram discount at 55% because of the 15% Ingram keeps for shipping. And you can't pick and choose between online catalogs and stores. In other words, you have to set that discount to 55% everywhere. So you only get $3.74 per book, even for the books that sell online. In other words, you're leaving money on the table with every online sale. Number six, bookstores won't sell your book for you. Now, based on those numbers, you have to give up about half of your revenue per online sale if you want your book to be in stores. So you'd have to sell just as many extra copies in physical stores just to break even. And that's not very likely, not only because physical stores are seeing less foot traffic, but also because of this simple fact, bookstores won't sell your book for you. Putting your book on a bookstore shelf does not mean it will sell. Bookstores give high traffic placements and prominent end caps to national bestsellers and established bestselling authors. So if bookstore owners and employees haven't heard of you or your book, they won't do anything special to sell it. The only way to sell books is for you to generate that demand by getting your book in the right media and in the right places for your niche target market to get excited about it and want to buy it. If you successfully do that, your book doesn't have to be on physical shelves. People will look it up on Amazon or on some online retailer and order it without any risk to you at all. So being on a shelf isn't actually doing anything for you. There's no real upside. What's actually helping you is that people can search for your book and find it when they want to buy it online. The best solution for self-publishing authors. Here's the bottom line. The best solution for independent authors who want to sell books through traditional bookstores is this. Get your book into online bookstore catalogs, generate demand with a solid book marketing plan, approach a few individual stores with your book if you really want to. 
Now let's go through each one. Step one is getting into online catalogs. Now the first step is simple and direct. Distribute your print book through Ingram Spark with your own ISBN and set your wholesale discount at the lowest discount that the system allows. Your book will be picked up by most online retail catalogs automatically from chains like Barnes & Noble and Books A Million all the way to mass retailers like Walmart and Amazon, and even to independent bookstores with their own online stores. Number two, generating demand for your book. Self-published authors can generate demand for their book through a lot of different channels. You can do book reviews, blogs and guest posts, social media, podcasts, book promotion sites, and more. You can actually check out our book marketing course for free right here. And for specific strategies, read our posts in the description below on book promotion and book marketing plans for independent authors. And the third step, approaching individual stores with your book. If a bookseller knows and believes in your book, they will sell it. So it's worth being in a few bookstores, even just one, if someone in those stores is going to be excited about your book. And if they'll order it at a discounted rate, that works with your overall strategy or if they'll sell your book on consignment, which some will. I've actually had two of my books in a local bookstore. I enjoyed the experience of learning how to pitch it, but the fact is not all the copies sold and they ended up returning them to me. And I've sold thousands of them online. It was a cool experience, but ultimately it didn't move the needle for me. How do you sell your self-published book to bookstores? Step one is to be your own sales team. So traditional publishers actually have sales teams who go to bookstores with binders full of books that the publisher wants them to promote, and then they convince them to stock those books. You basically need to do the same thing, but just with your own book. In short, you need to be your own sales team. Step two is to craft your pitch. Now, the way publisher sales teams do it is they don't try to convince bookstore owners that their books are good. They try to convince them that the books will sell. And that is a huge difference. Now, occasionally a bookseller will fall in love with a particular book and they'll try to promote the heck out of it. As an independent author, that's your ideal situation. You can't depend on that happening. But the more you can do to prove that you're helping them generate demand, the better. So include things like this in your pitch. Awards that your book has received. Notable reviews and blurbs. Bestseller lists your book has appeared on. Media that your book has appeared in. And really anything else that a bookstore can use to sell your book to its customers. Better yet, leave them with a review copy and show them any marketing materials you can provide to help make their job easier. Step three, consider a hybrid discount strategy. Wholesale discounts aren't all or nothing. While bookstores won't wanna stock your book at a 15% discount, they don't really need the full 40% either. A discount rate somewhere in between might work best for your own sales strategy, especially if you have a way to bring people in the door consistently. Step four, think local. When it comes to local bookstores, your book has a home court advantage. Booksellers often dedicate shelf space just to promote local authors. Instead of a phone call, you can actually approach your local bookstore in person. Bring them a review copy of your book along with marketing materials they can use to advertise the fact that you're a local author. And if you can combine that with a solid pitch for a local event that can bring people in the door, they'll love you. You'll be an instant favorite. Step five is to bring a crowd. Book signings aren't what they used to be. Just holding a book signing isn't enough to bring people in the door. But if you can pitch a book signing that's coordinated with a local media appearance to help the bookstore advertise the event, they'll be a lot more interested. They can stock books for the events and they can even have you sign a few extras so they can sell them later as autographed copies. And if you have a way to bring crowds into stores across the country, you can always reach out to buyers at the big chains, but that comes with all the risks I described previously. Don't pitch the book unless you're certain you can sell enough books to make it worth those risks and that 40% discount. Here's some much better ways to make money with your book. At Scribe, we've helped several hundred authors write, publish, and market their books. Many of those authors have used their book to make a lot of money, but most of that money didn't come from book sales. So if you are looking for ways to make money with your book, 
be sure to check out this video for 20 ways to make money with your book. All right, the bottom line is this. Look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your book. It's your book. I just want you to be able to make an informed decision about what you want to do and how to get there. But if you want my bottom line recommendations and takeaways, here they are. Most authors shouldn't worry about being in bookstores. You don't need to be in bookstores for your book to be a success. But if you do decide to focus on bookstores, be in a small number of local stores. That is a lot less risky than being in a lot of stores across the country. And if you want bookstores to stock your book on actual shelves, you can put your print book on Ingram Spark, make it returnable, and set the discount to 55%. But you'll still have to convince bookstores to stock it. If you do manage to get your book into a large number of stores, make sure you have a contingency plan there is a significant risk that your books could be returned, leaving you in the red.